Jay Radha Bhagava Kunjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Kunja Gopi Janavalava Giri Varanahari Hey, Giri. I go be Janavalava Giri Vara Dahari. Giri Vara Dahari. This soul and undana, Raja Jana and Jana. Jasaur Nandana Raja Dhyana Dhyana Jammu Nathi Rahavan Chaharyam Dhyam Jammu Nathi Rahavan Chaha, <laughs> Kunjabi Ahi Ahi Adhaya Gopi Janavallava Giri Vara Dhanai Gopi Janavallava It is Sodhanandana Raja Janavallava Yasur Nandana Raja Jana Hanjana Jammu Nati Rahavan Chahayanati Jammu Nati Rahavan Chahayanati And Jai Radha Madhava Kunjavi Ahadira Jai Radha Madhava Kunjavi Ahadira Premanande Hari Hari Vam Shira Prabhupada Ki Jai Mari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai Humagyan Timirandasya Ginajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Paschatya Desatarine 
Vanchakalpa Tarubhisya Kripa Sindhu Bhae Bhaja Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Aishnavebhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So I chose a particular verse they asked me to speak on. Well, two things, cooperation and uh, how to satisfy Srila Prabhupada. So when I heard the second thing, I thought of cooperation. We spoke a little bit about this last Sunday but here is a particular verse. And what I would like to do, if it's all possible, we're going to read the verse and the translate and the purport, and we're going to ask devotees questions based on what is on the screen. And so please be ready. If you can, raise your hands. We're going to try to make this a little bit of an interactive uh, presentation based on this verse, which is really a very powerful and a very important verse. This verse is spoken by Lord Vishnu himself. Okay. I'll just briefly go through the Sanskrit. Varam vinidam badram vo yuyame nirpanandanaha saradena pritag dharmas tustaham saradena va. Translation. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, my dear sons of the king, I am very much pleased by the friendly relationships amongst you. All of you are engaged in one occupation, devotional service. I am so pleased with your mutual friendship that I wish you all good fortune. Now you may ask a benediction of me. So the Lord is speaking to the sons of King Prachini Barhishat, known as the Prachetas. There are nine of them. And they work together as the Lord is so much pleased to see their friendly relationships and their focus in activities of devotional service. So the Lord speaks and he's offering his heart by explaining how pleased he is. So now we'll read the purport and we can go down the page as we read. Since the sons of King Prachini Barhisha were all united in Krishna consciousness, the Lord was very pleased with them. Each and every one of the sons of King Prachinda Barhishat was an individual soul, but they were united in offering transcendental service to the Lord. The unity of individual souls attempting to satisfy the Supreme Lord or rendering service to the Lord is real unity. In the material world, such unity is not possible. Even though people may officially unite, they have all different interests. In the United Nations, for instance, all nations have their particular national ambitions and consequently they cannot be united. Disunite, disunity between individual souls is so strong within this material world that even in the society of Krishna consciousness, members sometimes appear disunited due to having different opinions and leaning towards material things. Prabhupada goes on, actually in Krishna consciousness there cannot be two opinions. There is only one goal, to serve Krishna to one's best ability. If there is some disagreement over service, such disagreement is taken to be spiritual. Those who are actually engaged in the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead cannot be disunited in any circumstance. This makes the Supreme Personality of Godhead very happy and willing to award all kinds of benedictions to his devotee as in indicated in this verse. We can see that the Lord is immediately prepared to award all benedictions to the sons of King Prachini Bharishat. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So this is an interesting verse because it talks about unity and it talks about disunity and it talks about what pleases the Lord very much. The Lord is so pleased when he saw that these sons, who are all brothers actually, 
um, work together in a way to serve each other by serving the mission of Krishna consciousness. The Lord was observing them and now he appears to them seeing how pleased he is. He says, I'm so pleased with your mutual friendship and he also says your mutual re relationships that I'm willing to give you any benediction. Just ask. <laughs> Imagine if the Lord said that to you. Just ask for anything. Hmm. What would you ask for? <laughs> so then again, that would be the test. But here, the Lord is so pleased and he wants to show. So I'm going to ask a question. And uh, maybe you can raise your hand and then we'll see where. Once we get the answer, we'll also discuss the answer based on the question. Question. Why is unity, now all of these questions are based on what we read in the purport, so the answers are all there, it's not like it's not there. Why is unity not possible in the material world? Question, yeah. What's the what's the example giving in the material here the material world? What's the example given for disunite disunity based on so-called unity? United, United, Nations. United Nations. They all want to come together. They call themselves united, but then again, what is the individual interest of each of the different countries are different. So although they talk about unity, there can't be any unity. Why? Because there is no what? Why isn't there any unity? Cooperation. Well, yeah. yeah, cooperation around what? Around devotional service. No, no, we're talking about material now. They got, oh, everyone has different interests, right. So what's missing? Yeah, they all have different goals. <laughs> There's no center. So in order for unity to be there, there has to be the focus on one center. And then everyone unites around that one center. Okay. Good. Why is it possible, why is unity possible in the spiritual circle? Easy question. Why, can, why is it so easy for devotees to be united? Somebody different, yes? We all have the same center, we all have the same center Krishna. Be more specific. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, I like Krishna, you like Krishna. We... Well, everyone wants to do what? Serve Krishna. There's the connection, okay. Krishna's the center and the activity is? Service. Okay, it's not like the activity is, well, Krishna's the center, and he's he's the, he's there for my enjoyment. <laughs> I mean this. I mean that that that's a common thing. That I'm Krishna is the center of my enjoyment. I have so many things that I like to enjoy in this world, but Krishna is my most favored form of enjoyment because <laughs> he gives me nice prasadam, <laughs> and he stands on the altar and doesn't talk to me. So. <laughs> And he lets me do whatever I want. <laughs> so that kind of uh, focus on Krishna is not uh, what we say unity. The unity is based on service, service to, to, to the object, which is Krishna. Okay, you got that. Okay, now here's the next question. Now, what is one, of course, I don't know. Go back to the, uh, go back to the, the actual, uh, yeah, there, are you okay, okay. What is one Sanskrit word that is repeated by Lord Vishnu twice in this verse? Hmm? Saridena, okay, you see it twice, right? And what does the word Saridena mean? Hmm? 
close. Sarudena means what? You know, I know you know. <laughs> He's the one that told me the translation in Slovenian. <laughs> huh? Who said it? Friendship. Friendship, right. Sarudena means friendship. The Lord says it twice. Because there's mutual friendship, there is m m friendly relationships. Both twice, he says it. When the Lord speaks, he doesn't necessarily repeat himself, but when he wants to make a point, he repeats himself. So when there's emphasis on rep by reputation, you can understand that it's, that's a very key point in what he wants to say. So what he's saying, because of that friendly relationships among you, then I am so pleased. <laughs> okay, sorry, Dana. Okay, what are the two reasons why two devotees within ISKCON can have disunity? So there's two reasons that are mentioned there why there could be disunity. Hmm? Material desires and what's the other one? It's, it's written right there. Uh, go down to the purport and let the devotees see it. Uh, who said that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, you know, this is the best way to serve Krishna. No, this is the best way to serve Krishna. No, this is the best way. But both are wanting to serve Krishna, but both have different opinions on how to serve. So, is there a disunity? Yes and no. <laughs> oh, okay, that's a very nice aphorism you gave. <laughs> well, therefore, I'm going to ask for an explanation. <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. It's transcendental disunity, but what does it actually translate into? Unity. It's unity. When it when the service is the focus, although there may be opinions on how to serve or what is the best way to serve, it's still unity because the principle of service is the main connect the connection. Both want to serve, but both want to serve in different ways. So there's still unity. And what's the other part? What is the other thing that talks about apparent disunity? It seems to be a little bit harder to explain, but it's there, it's all mentioned. Two things. Somebody else mentioned it before, I think. It's there. Oh, let's see. There's some agreement over, it's taken to be a spiritual. Hmm. Okay. Okay, go bring it down a little bit. Just way. Okay, here you go. Let's, let's see. Okay. Okay, here it is. What does it say? Leaning towards material things. So one person may be more inclined to satisfy their own desires in relationship to the service they perform and another person may want don't have any material desires to satisfy and they just want to satisfy Krishna both are serving so there is the connection of the unity but one has some motivation for service and the other one doesn't or maybe one had two people have two different motivations for the same service in other words, this is where the mode of passion starts to enter in. We're looking for results from devotional service. Something, I want to gain something from devotional service. Not something spiritual, 
but something material. I want to, I want to be known as a person who serves really nicely. So I'm serving nicely so I can get some recognition that I'm a good servant. Or I want to win the competition for the best service so I get the maha play. <laughs> well, we used to do that. We used to we have we would have competitions and for service, and then one person distributed the most books, they would get the, the Mahat plate. <laughs> Using book distribution as the, the means for uh, increasing their service. So that's good. So although there may be some tendency towards something material from the service itself, it doesn't cause disunity. Although the opinions, there might be a different opinion on how to serve, and there might be a different opinion on what, what is the purpose of the service, still because the service is there, because Krishna is the object of the service, there is unity. unity. Okay. So these are the two reasons. Okay, okay. What is the difference between conflict and disagreement on the material platform and on the spiritual platform? So that's a double question. So what is the difference between conflict on the material platform and conflict on the spiritual platform? Conflict amongst non-devotees, conflict amongst devotees. What is the essential difference? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's correct from one angle of vision. And that's, that's right. In, in the material world, everyone is competing against each other, although they're working with each other. And in the spiritual, the spiritual conflict or disagreement is based on... Well, no, the fact that Krishna is the one who we want to be satisfied in one Yeah, in other words, there's a disagreement on how to satisfy Krishna. Let me go back to that same point. But what happens when there's difficult disagreements and conflicts in the material world? What happens when if it's not solved? What's the result? War, War or anger, anger or hmm? lust. lust, which is a, an experience of wanting to satisfy one's own senses. What else? What what what's the ultimate result when people disagree? Hmm. Well, yeah, not the reason, but what happens when they do? Huh? Huh? They're disunited, and what, what, and what, and what happens after that? They go, they broke, they break apart. But when devotees are disunited, based on these differences, do they break apart? Hmm? If we do, then we're material. <laughs> That's the point. When we, we have disagreements and conflict, what is, what is the uh, ultimate, what's the next step, or what is, how, to, what is the, how, how is things resolved from that? Do we just break apart and go our own way and do our own thing? So what is the, what's the solution? We remember. Hmm? We remember. We remember, okay, we remember why. We remember the purpose why we're coming together, which is? To, to, to satisfy Krishna by, ser by serving Krishna. Okay, well, what are some of the uh, solutions to disagreements in the spiritual platform? Yeah, that's one solution. <laughs> but after they're done, they'll disagree again. <laughs> I understand this, that they, uh, their heart uh, tend to be softened so they can hear each other after the, the, the chanting Hare Krishna. 
Oh, that's a good point. He's, what he said is that once they start chanting, they become a little bit purified or become a little bit aware of the situation beyond their own personal interest. And then they do what? They will start to look for solutions to cooperate. There you go. Cooperation may not be something that happens immediately, but the te but the desire to cooperate becomes the focus. Yeah, the desire to cooperate becomes the focus. Because Prabhupada said, wherever there's two people, there's two opinions. <laughs> And that's true. Even you, you know, for those of you who are married, I don't have to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever there's two people, there are two opinions. It's just the way, even amongst best friends, no two people see the same thing exactly the same. Two people may closely see the same thing, almost the same, but no one sees it because we all have our, what we say, individual consciousness. And consciousness is quite complex. It's made up of so many factors. But the point in spiritual life is that devotees always seek solutions to conflicts which will bring about what is called complete unity. Like that. Now, even if people are, are disagree with each other, if they're working together in a way to serve Krishna, still that is unity. Because keeping Krishna in the center. What, what's the problem is that when we go away, or we break apart, or we start to criticize without looking towards a solution for the problem, in a way, and what, where, is the, where is the foundation to find solutions in disagreements? Where do you look for solutions? Or what are some of the means by which you can bring about solutions? Hmm? Well, that's the first step, right. What does Krishna want? What does the spiritual master want? The same. That's the same thing. It's just the same way of... It's two different ways of saying the same thing. Because what Krishna wants is what the spiritual master wants. And what the spiritual master wants is what Krishna wants. <laughs> yeah. So like that. So then you have the foundation by which then what happens after that? Okay. You have to look the facts. Huh? You have to look the facts. And you have to see the situation, what what are the facts that make up the situation? And what does what does Srila Prabhupada, what does my spiritual master, what does Krishna say about this situation? Now, you might say, well, this is unique, but that's not true. <laughs> Every, everything that's ever happened in life has already happened. <laughs> All you have to do is study history, because <laughs> history repeats itself, and human nature is basically the same. <laughs> Although it may appear differently in different time periods, human nature is the same. So to apply the solution to the problems by understanding, let's go beyond our personal interests to where? The interest of Krishna or the words of the spiritual master and apply that. Then again, you might say, well then, that requires interpretation. I interpret it this way and you interpret it that way. Well, that may also happen. So then again, where do you go when you get to that point? Well, yeah, well, Prabhupada said this, but then he also said this. Because <laughs> there are differences where Prabhupada said the same thing uh, about the same situation in two different ways. Because the time and circumstance with it for the situation was different. So then you have to see what is the time and circumstances that apply to the particular situation that we are trying to solve or trying to develop unity for. So what is the basic principle where these things develop? What's the, what's the key word? Mercy. 
<laughs> well, yeah, that, that, yeah, that's that's true. Intelligence is there also, huh? Humbleness, that's good. Yeah, yeah. What else? Sincerity. Not worrying about so much about what I think is right, but what is actually the solution of the problem. If it's my opinion and I'm stuck on my opinion, that may not be what is the solution. And that causes what we say, leaning towards material things. <laughs> leaning towards material things. Yeah. So that's the example there. So there's always disagreements because, and especially in this age of Kali, disagreement is very, very strong everywhere in the world. But we have a center, and the center is how to please the Lord through our devotional service. And of course, if the Lord is pleased, then you're pleased. When someone asks Prabhupada, how do we know that Krishna is pleased by our service. Prabhupada says, you are part and parcel of Krishna. And if you're serving Krishna, and Krishna is pleased by that service, you will automatically be pleased. In other words, you'll feel satisfaction in that service. Or you may even feel happiness in that. So, Because the connection is never broken. As soon as we connect with Krishna in service, then whatever Krishna feel, you, you, feel, you can see that sometimes when you do something, you feel dissatisfied. Oh, it wasn't right. <laughs> like that. And you just realize that Krishna wasn't pleased. Or you might feel the opposite. Oh, Krishna was pleased. So this connection is never lost, even though we may not always be aware of the connection. <laughs> like that. So this is an interesting verse because and purport and Prabhupada really goes into the heart. He said, if there's some disagreement over service, such disagreement is to be taken as who said? Spiritual, yeah. So devotees can never be disunited. Why? Because Krishna is in the center. Disuniting actually comes when we put ourselves in the center. <laughs> Here's where the disunity. If we have material motivations in our devotional service, we create this apparent disuni disunity. And even if we have material motivations, if we completely neglect them or reject them, or ignore them, and go back to service, automatically the, un the unity again becomes awakened. <laughs> this is a very, very essential verse. And what is the result? What does Krishna say in this particular, uh, what does he say? Now you can ask a benediction from me. Wow. <laughs> That's powerful. When the Lord says, I'm so pleased, he said it twice. And he said friendship twice, he said please twice. He said two things twice. He said now, uh, because of that, ask anything you want from me. <laughs> So this is an example that is not just something that in the Shastra, it's a fund fundamental principle of how the Lord is satisfied when he sees devotees are working together in a cooperative way to, to serve each other by serving the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Very powerful purport. Okay, so um, any last comments or questions in relationship to this? Yes, Prabhu. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a microphone coming your way. We have to end at four thirty because today is a yeah, okay. different I'll schedule. Very short. <laughs> uh -huh. In uh, Slovenian language, we have a saying that uh, the one who is more intelligent, he gives up first. So uh, the one who is more intelligent gives up first. Yeah, that's a good. That's yeah. Speak so, it in your language. How's it go? Uh, okay. Uh, this means the one who is more intelligent, he gives up first. Mm -hmm. So, but mm -hmm. I have a feeling that there is always preaching to the congregations 
to the congregational members that they should give up first. <laughs> so who should give up first, the <laughs> temple authority or the congregation? Neither. Who is more intelligent? Nobody should give up. <laughs> Everybody should th try to think about how we can serve Krishna together. <laughs> We did that once. We were serving Krishna together. Now we're not serving Krishna together. So now what do we have to do to get back to serving Krishna together? So what, it, what once was a reality is no longer a reality, but the reality still exists in, in the history of our, of our association. So let's go back to that. What, is, what will it take to bring that back again? So it takes some, as you say, intelligence. <laughs> giving up means means giving up your own ideas, but not giving up on the idea of bringing unity. <laughs> Why gopis don't speak about unity? Huh? Why gopis don't speak about unity? Because they're already united. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that there are many quarrels, how should Krishna be served, yeah, yeah. that there are two camps, Radharani camp yeah, and exactly. another camp, yeah. and but they don't speak about unity. Yeah, but they all love Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> but Prabhupada talks about that. What you're saying is a very important point. Prabhupada talks about that. He says that in the, in the spiritual world, one gopi will see another gopi serving Krishna nicely, and that gopi will think, wow. That gopi serving Krishna so nicely. I want to serve like them, and I want to even serve better than that gopi. <laughs> now, that sounds like spiritual envy, which it is. <laughs> but who benefits? Krishna. <laughs> so if we have competition, who can serve better? Who's going to win? Krishna. And the devotees also. <laughs> because the devotees will get will get purified and make advancement, and then by trying to compete, who can serve the best? But again, the, the principle of cooperation and unity is based on on uh, not so much on my opinion or your opinion, as you say, the one who gives up at first is the most intelligent one. But Sanatana Goswami, you know, when Pandit came. And he wanted to defeat him, and he said, okay, you are more intelligent than me, I sign you. Yeah. He gave up. Yeah. And he, he, he didn't want to waste time with the guy. <laughs> he was just, uh, he was more interested in doing his bhajan, because he wasn't, care, he didn't care about this idea of, well, I'm better than you, or you're better than me. He wasn't, he wasn't interested in that. His interest was in doing his bhajan and serving the Lord. But Jiva Goswami got angry. <laughs> but that's, that, 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 was an, that was another point to that particular pastime. And, and he defeated that person. And then when Rupa Goswami heard that, he got angry at Jiva Goswami for doing that. <laughs> and Jiva Goswami was forced to leave Vrindavan because Rupa Goswami said, you don't belong in Vrindavan. <laughs> you don't have the Vrindavan mood. <laughs> so yeah, that point is there. Yeah. But a devotee doesn't care about any kind of position or prestige or benefits that come from position. They care about how to serve the Lord and how to please the Lord. That becomes the focus. Because they know, if Krishna's pleased, I'm going to be happy. <laughs> if Krishna's pleased, I'm going to make advancement. So that's, that's the focus. <laughs> like that. Okay, and here we find what what pleases Krishna? Cooperation, <laughs> friendship. That was the point of this verse. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I give up. Very <laughs> 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 good. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, what should we say if Krishna asks us what benediction we want? <laughs> <laughs> What's the well, best answer? You're, in other words, you're asking my opinion. 
What would I say? Wow. Well, well, please give me love of God. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya did that when he was here. He saw someone who very much pleased him, immediately benedicted him with love of God. In other words, love of God is in your heart already. So what, what the Lord is doing is clearing away those things that are blocking that experience of love of God. The Lord, love of, the Lord can give you love of God by taking away those things that are blocking your love of God. That's all. That's how he does it. The love of God is already there. If you love Krishna, if you have that love, then there's nothing else. What else is there? What else can you want? Love is the highest emotion. Love is the highest satisfaction. And love of Krishna is, is the perfection of life <laughs> and the goal of devotional service. I was thinking maybe we can uh, ask him to not be any more any material word ever. Well, what's his name? Vasudev Datta Thakur said the same thing. My dear Lord, take everyone out of the material world and give them all, give me all of their sinful actions. But the Lord said, even if I do that, and I'm because you asked, I can see that you are, you know, very, very dear to me. And the Lord showed his pleasure for Vasudev Dat so much. But he said, then the universe will fill up again with other living entities. So it says in the Shastras that the manifestations of the material world are temporary, but the material world is permanent. In other words, it's annihilated and created again and again and again. Just like everywhere you find, there are, in every country, there are people who will break the law. <laughs> and that's why you have a prison house. <laughs> you can expect that. <laughs> so this is the prison house. <laughs> so that would be, that would be a, a wonderful no more material world. That means everyone is back home, back to Godhead. So what you said is even better than what I said. <laughs> I was only asking for love of God for myself, but you're asking it for everybody. And so that's even higher. Because the material world is for those who don't have that. <laughs> the spiritual world is for those who have it. <laughs> yeah, so that's higher. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I didn't Krishna. think of that one. That was good. <laughs> but now, if you, Vasudev Datta Thakur was an example for wanting to bring about that by taking everyone else's sinful activity. And the Lord, the Lord was so, so pleased with Vasudev that the Lord was actually crying out of love for Vasudev. And he took, he didn't give Vasudev Dat any of the sinful actions, but he took everybody back to Godhead. It says that he emptied the universe out just because of Vasudev's desire, just to please Vasudev. But then again, after some time, it fills up again. <laughs> Material world. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Is, a, is that a question over there? Okay. Okay. Uh, can you repeat that one more time? So that means that even now, uh, souls from spiritual world uh, feel this material world. Well, they're coming from, there's so many universes, either this material universe or that material, but depending on your karma, you go from one universe to another. So there's millions of universes, so there's unlimited amounts of jivas in the material, not just this one universe. And souls can also fall from the spiritual world, they're still falling, yeah. I mean, it's all time transition, up, down, up, down. 
Well, as long as the independence of the living entity is there, there will always be choice. And choice doesn't mean sometimes the living entity will decide to be separate from Krishna. That's a choice. It's a wrong choice, but it's a choice. <laughs> but once you get God back, God doesn't return here. Right, exactly. Krishna says that. Once you go back, you don't come back. And it, yeah, because you just like you stick your hand in a fire, and you go, oh, my hand got burnt. So now you don't do it again. Thank you, Maharaj, very much. Thank you. Okay, so when you go back, remember that. <laughs> don't come back. Don't, we like you, but don't come back again. <laughs> he the road jack, huh? <laughs> we'll have our Ljubljana in the spiritual world. <laughs> all the devotees will be there. Prabhupada said, I'll be there to welcome all of you. <laughs> Prabhupada, yeah. Thank you. So we should move on because uh, it's a little bit of a tighter schedule today. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Hare Krishna 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 Jai